All right, sorry about that. I ended that last part a little too soon. So I want to uh, kind of pick up where I left off. I was What I was doing was I was applying some collinear constraints to this geometry. And uh, the reason why I had to do it last time, I kind of used the rectangle tool and then did outlets and extruded each of those individual features, which does work. But to kind of enhance it, I'm just making sure I've got uh, collinear constraints on the horizontal and vertical segments, some of which did not register right away. So I'm just kind of clicking around and making sure that they do exist, so that way the geometry moves predictably. In that case, there was one that was not there. And then that would, that's that sort. Okay, so now they'll move together. Okay, so what I was doing before in the previous uh, video was I was dimensioning the uh, vertical location of this uh, inlet feature here. And I want to finish that up, so I'm gonna go ahead and add some dimensions to this, 0.29, and then it should, yep, there we go, now it finally moved things properly the way they should have been, and I'm going to dimension to the center point here, to the, and again, I'm just kind of using the drawing as a guide as to where or what dimensions I'm using, uh, and notice that I also kind of want to constrain the center points here in a collinear set as well, so I'm going to do that right here, uh, I want to uh, apply this dimension as well to the center point here so I'm going to go ahead and fix that real quick kind of having to add a couple of things here and you may find that as you work with Autodesk that you have to add in extra things just in case just to make sure things work and there's nothing wrong with that uh, as long as you're aware of what needs needs ed editing so 2.26 here and then I don't have to add the overall dimension because that's geometry that already exists so I don't have to worry about that okay um, so after all that work, it looks like we've actually got the uh, feature here all set, and then we've got the notches on here, although I noticed that this ca this case I've got to locate vertically uh, these other center points as well, so I'm going to add dimensions to those as well. Oops. Okay. So these are one, sorry, these are 0.95, and center point 1.94 for this here. And I'm sure there's an easier way to do this, but I want to just make sure that we can get to the part, uh, the part, the hard part of this particular part, which is the extrusion and the shelling. So, okay, so I finally, so I moved all those notches. They look all right. Um, I probably could have gone, gone about this in an easier way. Um, you're probably telling me right now in the video that probably could have gone about certain things easier way, but it is what it is. Okay, the other thing we have to do before we extrude is we have to fill at each edge, and that's going to uh, go to 0 0.5, 0 0.15 radius. So we just want to fill at the corners here and we go down here fill at this corner and then one more corner to fill it and then we're done okay so that all set now we can finish the sketch and we can knock out this this uh, extrusion so here's the th this is the part that, that's new you know what extrude does we select the face and see how we it nice and neatly gets all those ribs in there um, but this time, we're not going to do it to an extent of a, of a distance. We're actually going to go to what's called to next. So we have to use the expanded window here, and we have to select this pull-down menu and go to next. And what that means is it's going to join an extrusion as the upside face here being what's called the terminator. So that means, I know, like, you know, hasta la vista, baby, but no. Um, we're going to be making this particular extrusion meet and end at the surface. So when I hit OK, you'll notice that this particular feature now stops at that, okay? Which, we, because of the material we see, we can kind of see where that where that terminates, uh, which is really kind of cool. And then the other thing we have to do now is we just have to shell this out. So when we go to shell, we're gonna select again the bottom side. In this case, the drawing uh, indicates that the thickness of this is 0 0.05. So when we shell it, we're gonna shell it to 0.05 thickness, okay? 0.05, and we hit okay, the check mark and then we have done it. Now, the other thing that we want to do is to kind of clean this up here is we don't need this work plane, right? We, don't, we, need, we need it to keep the sketch on there, but we don't need to see it. So we can go over to work plane here and we can right click it and we can uncheck visibility. And now the work plane disappears and now we have ourselves a finished windshield, okay? So you notice I used a slightly different part on this versus my uh, part I showed you at the beginning here. This one here is a little more transparent, which makes sense because it's glass, so you can see the inside edges here terminating um, under the underside and everything. So this is all done. This is a, a well done part here, and uh, hopefully this video helped you create this part. Okay. So in our third part, when we go to the next video, uh, our third series will be the um, 
passenger section and we'll talk about how to make those polygons on there and how to do the shell and we'll spend a little bit of time talking about how to make that star which is certainly the uh, more difficult of the, of the features. So thanks for watching. We'll see you later.